hey, I'm pretty sure that we all have a dream camera lens combination that we would really like to own, but for some reason we don't. Like some of us dream about a phase one. Somebody else would like to have a black paint M3 Leica. I always dreamed about a wide angle Rolleiflex. But above all, for me, the dream combination is a Graflex Speed Graphics together with an Aero Ektar lens. Now, the Aero Ektar lens is a World War II aerial photography lens. Pretty rare, hard to come by, and fairly expensive. But um, if there's a will, there's a way. And what Silicon Valley taught me was that fake it until you make it. And this is exactly what I did. I faked it. I made myself an Aero Ektar <laughs> together with the Craftlex that I already owned. No, seriously, this is not an Aero Ektar. Um, a few years ago, I was in Budapest. And I found an enlarger condenser lens at the flea market. I paid 10 euros to get home. For the longest time, didn't know what to do with it. Then I thought that could I use it as a lens for a camera. And I soon sort of figured out that if I turn the front lens upside down, it focuses like a proper lens. And then I also measured the infinity and notice that it focuses to infinity within the movement range of my Graflex. So I thought, let me try to make this a poor man's Aero Ektar. And I went to the local hardware store and I bought some aluminum strip and some uh, screw rod. I took my favorite photography tools, like a saw, and some pliers and then of course I needed to have my power drill. There's hardly anything you can do with a camera without a power drill. And then I built a kind of an adapter or chassis that I attach to this lens. Now you can't use a lens board here because the lens is bigger than the board would be. So somehow you need to move the lens a little bit further from the from the camera, which I did by fabricating this chassis, and then I used some electrical tape to make it more or less light tight. Um, it looks pretty homemade, which I guess it is, but now I can attach the lens into my Graflex like any other lens and use the adjustments here. Pretty cool. <laughs> So the next thing I needed to do is to take some test pictures. And before that, I need to know what is the F number of my lens. Like without an F number, I can't expose the film correctly. I didn't know what an F number is, by the way. It's always printed on a lens so you can just read it. But I didn't really know what it is. And an F number is the focal lens, focal length of a lens divided by a diameter of the lens, like the light opening of the lens. It's as simple as that. That's the F number. But before you can calculate the F number, you need to know the focal length. And that was a little bit more complicated. Now there's an excellent resource by a gentleman named Wagner Lungov. I put the link to the description page. Now he explains this theory inside out and he has this neat tool that helps you to pick any lens. Like I got those old um, bronze lenses that have no F number printed on them. So I can also analyze now them and get an accurate F number for any lens. Now his tool is based on a couple of measurements that you do. First you take your camera and you focus it to infinity. And then you mark that infinity spot. Like that's the inf no, that's the infinity now. 
When you take an object, any object for, would do basically a, a pen or a, a book or a cup of coffee, whatever, something that you can put somewhere and then focus to that object. Now you get a new focus point which is not in infinity but it's close. And then you do three measurements. You measure how much you need it to move the lens from infinity to that new point. Then you need to measure from the crown glass the size of that object that you are looking at. And then you walk to that object and you measure the size of that object in real life. Then you repeat that. You move the object maybe a little bit closer and you once again focus to that object. You measure how much you need it to move from the infinity and then you measure the size on the ground glass. Now, um, one measurement would be enough to calculate the focal length. But Wagner's tool allows you to do multiple measurements and gives you a graphical implication kind of a graphical picture about how your measurements line up. They should form a solid line graphically and if there's one point that is not on that line, it's an outlier, you know that you have made an error in that measurement and you can omit that number or do the measurement again. Pretty neat tool. Take a look at that website if you are interested in this. And with that tool, I managed to calculate that the focal length of my lens is 104 millimeters, which sounded absolutely right, because a normal lens for this Graflex would be 135 millimeter. Now this is 104. It is clearly more wide-angle lens, but it is not like a fisheye or anything crazy. So that intuitively seemed like a, like a right measurement. Then I just measured the diameter of the lens and it was 150 millimeters. And remember that the F number was the focal length divided by the diameter length, you know, opening. So my F number is 0 0.9. I mean, this is the fastest lens I ever owned and I never seen anybody having a 0 0.9 F number on his or her medium format camera. <laughs> but hey, now let's get serious. F number means nothing. Like if you are in a process of buying a new lens, like I'm not talking about this kind of a goofy lens, but now in real life, like a real camera lens, you shouldn't look at the F number as the only thing to analyze or qualify the lens because an F number can be anything the manufacturer wants it to be. It can be anything. This is a 0 0.9 and I took some test pictures with it and they look like this. So as you can see, if I would have only looked at the F number, this would be a pretty cool lens. But now I look at the pictures, I notice that <laughs> it's practically unusable. So then I needed to do something about it. I needed to close down the diameter, get it smaller, therefore changing the aperture. And now that I have this formula, it was pretty easy to do. I took two pieces of plastic and then I took just regular shims. This shim is one centimeter shim and this is 1.8 centimeter. And then using that formula I can calculate the new F values for these aperture plates. This is this bigger one is F5.8 and the smaller one is F11.58. I think I got that right. Now I just need to use this and this is how you change the aperture of this lens. And it feels a bit complicated but even I managed to do that on the street downtown so it is doable. There's this kind of a spring system that holds hold on a second, holds the lens at bay. And then the lens comes out if I tilt it a little bit.
I put some tape around it so it's a little bit tighter right now but I was worried about breaking this lens when I'm taking it in and out so that's why it's a little bit tight. So now I can take one of these aperture thingies, put it inside of the lens, put the front element back, put this springy thing in to hold it in place and now I got f5.8 lens here. So then I went and took a few more pictures. I used Instax film and I used some Formapan film and I went downtown and to my usual places and took some test pictures like this. Hey, I let you to be the judge of those pictures. <laughs> but if nothing else, this once again proves how cool analog photography is, because it's so simple. Basically, you need three things. You need some light sensitive material, you know, Instax film, regular film, photo paper. Then you need a light tight box, a camera or a shoe box, almost anything would do. And then you need a, some kind of a way to collect the beams of light. A tiny hole is probably the simplest way. You can use weird lens combination. A magnifying glass is the one way to do it. And then your imagination is sets the limits. Now this of course, I mean this is this is not an aero hectar by any means. The quality is what it is, but it was an interesting experiment. We might want to call it an Ari hectar. Because it sure looks nice, doesn't it? <laughs> hey, this was a more or less an experimental episode. Next time something else. <laughs> See you then. Take care.